imagine if Brahms were here. What, what would you ask Johannes Brahms if he were sitting next to you now? I don't know if I would dare to ask him some, you know, just listen to what he would say to me rather than ask me. But um, actually, I found very interesting what you said about two things of Brahms that could actually uh, be applied to my to my piece yeah. if you um, continue your uh, your speech. I mean, uh, you spoke about the form, and uh, I was very uh, delightful listening to you speaking about the form because it's actually um, one of the main points of my of my piece because I wanted to do something totally different from Brahms. I would say Brahms, but all the <clears throat> the other classical composer uh, of the traditions. Because um, usually they try to be as um, regular as possible. So they do a first melody that, has, that lasts a lot, and then second melody that has its time and stuff, so on. But in my piece, for example, the first melody or the first part is like five minutes, and the second melody is 30 seconds. So I wanted to explore this, this form uh, distorting it a bit and uh, uh, changing the the way they should be it should be done. So um, this is a, a a thing that I was experimenting to do and uh, I was happy of the result, so to say, during the rehearsal that the result uh, was was fine. I I liked how it is because it's totally different from the tradition. So this this is a thing I would ask to Brahms if I can change his form in that way, but I don't think he would approve, but anyway. <clears throat> Isn't it an interesting thing, a curiosity, that your piece actually begins with, with a semitone, with, with, the, with the tiniest interval between notes, like Brahms do, but, it, but you exactly. do it more or less the same time, right? Creating. I, I did it uh, not in purpose, because I didn't know who was the other composer in my concert, or <laughs> I didn't know that uh, uh, there was the second of Brahms, of course, but uh, um, I think that this interval is very, is very magical in a way that it gives both relaxation feeling after a while, but also it gives tension. It's like a balance of the opposite, of opposite feelings, like relaxation and tension at the same time. And uh, actually, um, while I was doing this, while I was playing these two notes on the piano, for example, I was wondering, uh, for a long time, can I listen to this? But I, w I would play it for, for, for you. You're probably a much better piano player than me. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. So I was, I was sitting here and doing. Okay. And the sound disappeared. And I was saying, yeah, but I want to listen it, to it more. So. And you see the sound slowly goes down. And see what is not enough for me. I want to challenge myself and say, for a long time, people can, will stand to these two notes in a concert, and my answer is they could stand at least for 13 minutes, so that's <laughs> that's my piece <laughs> explained <laughs> in one sentence. But yeah, but it, it, it's very interesting to hear, of course. Thank you for your eminent piano play. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> Can you? It's always fascinating to meet an artist like yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in a small town in the middle of Italy that actually I know that you visit my region. It's called Marche and my hometown is called Fermo. So I started studying in the French horn when I was 12 years old. Then after three years I started uh, studying composition as well. So after graduating in uh, French horn, um, I, wa I was 19, almost. Two years later, I went to 
Northern world. I mean, a fermo in Italy, then I moved to Sweden for a couple of years in Gothenburg and I played for SNUA, the Swedish National Orchestra Academy in Gothenburg. Then <clears throat> I got back to Italy and worked with orchestras and uh, played in symphony, operas and stuff. Then I finished also my diploma in uh, composition in Italy. And then I was missing Sweden so much that I decided to come back to Sweden, but this time in Malmo. And I start the master in composition here in the Music Academy. Would you call Skåne the Italy of Sweden? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I got back here this, these days, it's amazing. You look like Italians more than we are. <laughs> so when we do so, like, I felt almost at home. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. And and how come you choose? I mean, I mean, you come from a, actually a part of Italy where where Gesual, uh, no, uh, Pergolesi. Pergolesi and Rossini and yeah. and that environment that that. Uh, but but you left it for for Sweden. What was it difficult? I mean, most Swedish people go south when we want to do something. No, sorry, not when we want to do something, but when we need when we want to tan or cultural experiences. Yeah, but um. I like that the, um, the thing is that you are so much connected to the, uh, the, the professional world. Like Academy is so close to the uh, professional orchestras, professional musicians. The first day I was having a lesson with my teachers, both in French or composition, they are connected to here, to orchestras, to music, to concerts. And this thing is uh, uh, wonderful for me because in Italy you have more difficulties in going from the school to the real world, so to say, to work, to play, and to make performances. That's why I felt at home when I was. I felt very happy to to come here twice, actually, uh, um, almost three times, because I should finish my second master in uh, composition, because you are very so connected to the professional world from the academy to that uh, this, this opportunity I have tonight, for example, would be impossible in my hometown to be performed by a professional orchestra when you are finishing your studies in, uh, in composition. It's, it's unbelievable for me. So I should be very grateful to you all for the rest of my life of this great opportunity you gave me with your country and with your uh, institution, so thank you very much. Well, actually, we should also be grateful because you have given us a piece of music. Um, do you listen to music as a composer? Yeah, I listen to it a lot. Just a, we're all curious, what, what kind of music do you listen to? Well, uh, um, I basically listen to all kinds of music. Last week I was listening to Brian Adams I don't know if you know, but it's like pop music from the 90s. And uh, sometimes I listen to contemporary music, uh, usually Berio or uh, Donatoni, for example. And then I like also the tradition, traditional classical music, like uh, Beethoven especially, and uh, Mahler, for example, or Brahms as well. But I mean, I, I really like to move from one genre to another. Uh, very, very fast. I mean. if, you, if you look for inspiration, do you find inspiration in music or in art in general or in life? Or, or does it come to you or do you seek it? Or Well, um, the inspiration is something always uh, different for all the, all the, all the artists, or to say, all the, the people that want to say something. I usually uh, don't, don't look for anything in particular. I just try to live and, uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm curious, so I look up for things and I, um, I'm curious, so I discover new, new things every day. Uh, for example, now that you said it, I want to tell you the story that is behind this piece so that you have a picture before listening to it. Uh, for example, for this piece I, I got a kind of inspiration both in music with the two notes that I lovely played for you before on the piano and uh, <clears throat> I also got an inspiration by <clears throat> remembering when I was a, a child 
and that I was looking to the horizon from the beach in my hometown and I, I like to stare at the, at the sea for, for a long time, for hours and see the, the different lights of the sun that was lighting it and uh, so I, I, I made up a story about uh, myself being alone in the world and uh, staring at the, at the horizon for all my life. So when, I, when I'm young, I'm standing up and uh, watching the horizon uh, strong and trying to understand what is behind it, what, what is the meaning of life, what, uh, what, why are we here and why we, are, uh, um, we have this limit in our life that is the horizon. But then years are going on and passing by, so I, I'm getting tired and a bit older, so I, I'm, I'm getting, I need to sit down. And, uh, but still, I want to know what is behind the horizon, so I sit down and still watch it and say and think, it. yeah, but why I cannot see it? Why I cannot reach it? I try to move, but I cannot. And then, <clears throat> I, in the last days of my life, I see the, that I, I still don't get a, an answer to, to my question, so I, I'm very tired and I lay down and decide to sleep for, and check the horizon for the last time. And when I'm laying down with the head on the, on the ground, I see that actually I, I moved my point of view. Now the horizon is not anymore horizontal, but it's vertical because I'm laying down and I'm closing my eyes. So I say, yeah, but now I got now I got the answer of life. The answer of life is just changing point of view gives you the, a new perspective of life. So now I was happy and I can uh, finally sleep and uh, solve the, the question and get an answer. I mean, that's a story that I was making up, but it actually could somehow explain the nature of the piece and the um, things that could be explained and things that are not explainable well, with words and uh, also with music. So I, I hope you, you see this image while you're listening to, to the music. Thank you. It's always difficult when, when with such a personal description of the piece, it's difficult to ask you any more questions. But still, I would like to ask, do, do you think, as a composer, that a piece of music needs a story? Well, I don't think it, it does need it, but if you have a good story, it's always better, I think, because um, people can have more layers to understand you, to connect to you and to your um, ideas, to your music and to your form of art. And, but usually, it's not a need to me, but uh, I like to have a story sometimes because uh, I see also when I explain things to musicians, to conductors, if you speak a lot with lots of things, they can find something, but they are not sure about what you're saying. If you give them a story or an image, they um, suddenly they find out what you're meaning and what you, what you say. For example, I, when we were rehearsing it yesterday, uh, actually two years ago, there was a part in the, in the piece that reminded me to a glass like this, that um, sometimes gets a crack, and then another crack, and then another crack, and then in the end it, um, get, it, it blows up because all the cracks destroy it. So I, there was a part in the piece that reminded me of that, and I told the conductor, you should Think about the cracks in the glass. Like there is one, there is two, and then it uh, they, they get more and more, and then the glass is broken. So we wrote it on the score, and after that, the, the part, this part was perfect. I hope you will you will find this this part in in, in my music. Otherwise, you come back to me, and I will tell you when it was. If, <laughs> if I'm not kidding, but I guess uh, I am. Could we say this is the first performance tonight, right? Of the, of the piece. First performance Could, in the world. Do you consider the piece to be, so to speak, born tonight when it's actually played to an audience, or have have you already left uh, sort of given away the child to the conductor and the orchestra? This is of course a metaphor, but but you understand what I mean. 
Absolutely, but I think that the, the, the peace gets born with the work of lots of people, starting from the conductor, from the composer, then the conductor, the orchestra, the managers, the, 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 the technicians, everyone is involved in the piece because the piece gets its birth the day of the concert. No matter what you say, I am the composer, I, I rule the world, is not true because then you have to face conductors, musicians, and it's a teamwork. I don't like to be bossy and say I am the, the composer and I, you have to say, you have to do it because I am the composer. No, it's a teamwork. Everyone works together and the more they work together, the more I are coordinated, the better the concert gets and the better the piece gets. So I like the teamwork rather than the, the, when I'm alone and I have to write because it's just a piece of paper as you see. It's you know, so. Thank you for sharing all this with us. My pleasure. We are all excited to hear the piece, of course. So let's give uh, Martino Torquati a, a big hand. Thank you. Thank you very much.